Good morning. Good morning and uh, welcome to the meeting of the Subcommittee on Zoning and Franchises. I am Council Member Francisco Moya, uh, the Chairperson of the Subcommittee, and today uh, I am joined by Council Member Gradenchek. Uh, if you are here to testify, please fill out a white speaker slip with the Sergeant at Arms and indicate the name of uh, the LU number of the application you wish to testify on on that slip. And we are also now joined by uh, Council Member Rivera. Uh, good morning. Uh, we, we will now start our hearings. Uh, our first hearing is on LU uh, 267, an application by TNS Restaurant LLC for a renewal of a revocable consent to operate an enclosed sidewalk cafe at Gracie's on 2nd Diner located at 300 East 86th Street in Council Member Kalos's district in Manhattan. And I now open up the public hearing on this application. Uh, is there any uh, mem member of uh, the public who wishes to testify in this application? Seeing none, uh, I now close the public hearing on this application. Our next hearing is on LU uh, 268, an application from KKND of 79th Street Restaurant Corporation, uh, DBA Nectar Cafe for, uh, for renewal of a revocable consent to operate an unenclosed sidewalk cafe located at 1022 Madison Avenue in Council Member Powers' district in Manhattan. And I now open up the public hearing on this application. Uh, is there any member of the public who wishes to testify on this item? Seeing none, I now close the public hearing on this application, and we will now go to our next hearing, um, which is on LU's 280, 281, an application by uh, Foreman Ferry LLC for a zoning map amendment to rezone 2529J Street in Council Member uh, Levin's district in Brooklyn from an M14 R8A district to an M16 uh, R8X district. Uh, there is also an application for a zoning text amendment to apply certain bulk regulations to uh, R8X districts map within the MX2 special district. Uh, the property to be rezoned is in the Dumbo Historic District and the actions would facilitate the development of a 12-story 10 FAR commercial build, uh, office building. And I now open the public hearing on this application and I call up uh, Melanie Myers and Jonathan Marvel. And Council, if you could uh, please swear in the panel. Good, good, good morning. Before responding, um, please state your names and um, please um, each swear or affirm that the testimony that you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, and that you'll answer all questions truthfully. Sure. Um, Good morning, uh, council members. My name is Melanie Myers. I'm a land use attorney with Freed, Frank, Harris, Schreiber, and Jacobson, and I swear that my testimony will be true in all respects. Good morning. My name is Jonathan Marvel, principal at Marvel Architects, and I swear that my testimony will be truthful and correct. Thank you. And thank you for having us. Um, as the uh, chair said, this is an application for a zoning map amendment and the zoning text amendment that would allow for an 11 story commercial building to be located in the uh, Dumbo Historic District. Um, we really appreciate the opportunity to work on a project that we think is both right for the area as well as a quite beautiful building. Um, to give a little bit of the background, um, I'll talk about the zoning actions and Jonathan will talk a little bit about the building and how we've sort of thought about how, how it fits in with the neighborhood. Um, from a location standpoint, we, the project is located at the corner of Plymouth Street and J Street in the Dumbo um, area. It is also in the midst of the uh, Dumbo Historic District. And one thing I just want to mention up front is because it's within the district, it is also subject for landmarks approval. And we were able to coordinate the review of both the land use actions as well as the, his, um, the landmarks actions. And so the project that you'll be sh shown this morning has received a vote of a unanimous approval by the Landmarks Commission. So we'll be showing you a project which we know the Landmarks Commission has supported. Um, 
From a zoning map, this is not easy to see, we are located in an M within the mixed-use district, which was the second mixed-use district that had been created in uh, the city, and we are in an M14 R8A district. That's a district that covers most of the buildings that uh, of the sort of larger loft buildings that are in the area. But there's some problems that we saw with that district in terms of trying to recreate a loft type of building. Um, the owners of the property have a long history in Dumbo. They are third generation. And their grandfather created a business in this um, site that we're talking about, as well as some of the surrounding buildings. And as they thought about what they wanted to do and how they sort of thought it made sense to think about this site, they really, in a certain level, were counter-programming. The mixed-use area certainly is home to both businesses and residents. And they thought that it was important to create a commercial um, building that would sort of lend itself to both the history of the site as well as the mixed use goals for the district. Um, this is the site today. It's a one story non contributing building and it fits within the framework of, we think, it, the site itself is sort of central to some, the, uh, the, the midst of the historic district and, the, and, and we sort of saw a real opportunity to pick up on the uh, fabric and the sort of strength in the, of the buildings that were there, and again, to kind of promote the commercial history of this area. And Jonathan will talk uh, about the design a bit more. Um, again, uh, we're sort of, again, located in the M14 R8A zone, and to, as we were looking at it, and the client and the owner, the owner of the property was looking at the site, uh, we realized that while the zoning allowed for buildings of scale, um, there were two uh, things that we wanted to try to address. The first, and if you look at the sort of envelope that's on my left, I think it's on everybody's left side, um, the build, there's, two, there's two issues that we wanted to address. One is that the way the zoning, while it was mixed use and the goal was to have a commercial and residential neighborhood, the current zoning uh, lends itself to residential. It sort of um, allows for a building that's up to a height of 145 feet but requires that it be, other than two stories, be a residential story. The second thing that it did, while it allows for a building of height um, and would allow for things like dormers to create a high street wall, you couldn't actually establish and create the um, sort of characteristic loft type of street wall, which really sort of runs tight to the street. So we've made, re our application seeks to kind of address those by allowing for a form, which you can see on the right-hand side, of, that, of the image um, to do two things. First, we would rezone the, the, the site to an M16 R8X. That would maintain the same density available for residential, but it would allow for that volume to be filled, and so it would allow for 10 FAR of residential use. And in addition, we'd be proposing two zoning text amendments. The first is a very simple one to include the R8X in the list of zoning um, districts that are within the mixed-use area. And then the second, which is more substantive, would allow for a building to um, have a street wall which reflects a, the street wall height is, uh, um, of a building that is adjacent to it. So in our case, the um, building at 20J Street across the street is the building that we would be tied to. We would create a building which is lower than that building, but one based on this, um, di then this diagram sort of shows it, that we think fits well within the scale of the, of the area. We were pleased um, to get the uh, support and recommendation of approval from the community board. At the, at the borough president level, we received uh, approval of the um, zoning map amendment, a recommendation of approval for the zoning map amendment, and I think support for a commercial building, though they had some different ideas about how to do it, but we think what we have is a project that fits well within the area and one that we hope for your support for. Thank you. Um, I'll dwell on this diagram a little bit more, and only to say that this is a unique area within the city because of the Manhattan Bridge and the Brooklyn Bridge give the Dumbo district a, a scale unlike any other. And, and in the diagram, 
you'll see that it, our building is is part of that construct of of warehouse type block shaped buildings and and we're being deferential to our neighbor immediately to to the west which was 20j and and we're we're kind of a transitional building from the bigger buildings closer to the bridge to the smaller buildings to the east of the bridge and here's our our the first rendering that you're going to see uh, it's you're looking at the at this prominent corner of Plymouth and J Street it's a building that that holds the street wall. It's an office building, and therefore, we are trying to maximize the flexibility of the floor plates, the the large windows to daylight the the interior, uh, to to create a sustainable, resilient building by having uh, less uh, artificial light for the office spaces. We we're in a partial, very partial flood zone, but we are we're very aware of 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 trying to make our entrances to the, on the ground floor, uh, we, which we have a, a, a lobby for the building on J Street in the middle and then side entrances, uh, creating a context for smaller commercial retail venues, mom and pop shops. We, so the, the, the lobby of the building uh, off J is flanked by 1,800, 2,000 square foot and 4,000 square foot retail spaces suggesting this is not for a big box. It's really for local startup venues. And the, the rendering here, as you look down, you're looking north on Jay, you're looking towards Brooklyn Ridge Park. You can see how our building makes a, a, a gateway uh, paired up with 20 J immediately across the street. So we're, we're creating a context that allows the, 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 the um, a significant entrance and marking the entrance to the Brooklyn Bridge Park, which is a big investment for the area. And this view from the park back to the building, uh, you'll, you're seeing now the, well, it's really not the back side of the building, but it's the river side of the building. Uh, we don't have that undulating concrete panel system. It's flattened out. These are our, our lot line windows where we're, we're, we wanted to create a character that that you can look up and not see blank walls, but see windows, you see activity, you see the, the life of Dumbo expressed in the architecture. It, now we're looking east on J Street, uh, you can, on Plymouth, and, and you can see how the context steps uh, down, but not entirely smaller scale buildings, but there is definitely a transition and we're part of that transition. We're also helping restore the, the, Belgian, the signature Belgian block uh, elements in the, in the, that are in the street and sidewalks on, on Plymouth Street. DOT has a current J Street project that we're not a part of. This is a view now looking uh, towards the, towards the, the, the up, upland side um, and looking towards the, the, the J Street stop. This is a, a, a major thoroughfare for people coming to the district, coming down J Street. So this is a, a building that supports the retail supports the pedestrian traffic by having active windows on the pedestrian block. And one of my favorite renderings, because it really ties in a very con contextually with the Manhattan Bridge, with the, with the diagonal bracing of the structure of the Manhattan Bridge, and we picked that up with the cross bracing on the inside of our building, allowing us to have uh, a, a, a building that, that speaks to these larger scale elements that I referred to earlier, which are so unique to Dumbo. Final image here, um, just to say that the, this is a building that is both contextually driven in its architecture. We, we wanted to participate with the concrete nature of the warehouses of the, of the historic buildings within Dumbo, at the same time be a contributing building towards a 21st century work environment. Um, and, and make this a, a great place for, for people to enjoy. Thank you. Before we uh, proceed to uh, questions, uh, let me just acknowledge that we've been joined by council members uh, Richards and uh, Levin. Uh, we are now going to um, take a vote uh, on the two applications we just held hearings on, which have the support of the local council members. Uh, I now call for a vote to approve LUs 267 and 268. Council, please call the roll. Moya. Aye. Levin. Aye. Richards. Aye. Rivera. Aye. Gradenchik.
The land use items are approved by a vote of five in the affirmative, no negatives and no abstentions. Thank you. Uh, just a couple of questions uh, before I turn it over to Council Member Levin. Um, do you agree that it's important uh, for your project to provide members of the community um, with good permanent jobs? Yes, absolutely. And following that, what are the concrete commitments uh, that you're willing to make to ensure that these are high quality uh, employment opportunities? I think there's uh, there might be two or three different parts to, to the response. The goal for the project as a whole was to th you know, think about it. It's, it's, it's a building that has size for sure, but it's not an enormous building. The idea for a commercial building is that it really would pro provide opportunities for smaller businesses and businesses that you know, have, can, can have connections to the neighborhood to be able to have uh, places of employment at work. So at the broader scale, that's absolutely part of the goals. I think you know if you're you're talking about sort of the management of the building and things like that. Um, you know there are members of 32BJ here today, and it's certainly the goal of the ownership to make sure that there are good and well-paying jobs there. Um, conversations are ongoing at this point. We think they're in a it, we, we you know from the perspective of ownership, we think there have been productive conversations, and we're hoping that they'll you know complete shortly. And I'm sure you'll hear from. Um, Great. members of the audience as well. Great. Um, and just sticking with that, well, are you, what are you planning uh, to pay cleaners, porters, security guards at the building, and how does that compare to prevailing wage, um, recognizing that the industry standards for building service workers in New York City has gone to that level? Just wondering if you could. I think that's part of the discussion, and I think we're getting very, very close. Okay. Um, what experience do you have managing a commercial building and workforce at this scale? The ownership of the project, if, that's, if, if this is your question, you know, you know, he, they have run a business and that is what they've done. This, again, they, they have owned property in this area for a long time. This is and will be their first project that is a commercial project. They, they, you know, so they understand that it is something that they, they have a long-term commitment to this site and they you know, want to make sure that what they're providing is a project that, can be, that, is, that is kind of worthy of its location in, in the district. Okay, and do you have a responsible contractor policy for the building uh, service work uh, that you could share with us? And if not, what are the plans to ensure that workers employed by the building service contractors have access to job protection, uh, family sustaining wages, uh, and good safety standards? Okay. And again, I think that we're in those conversations and this is something that you know, we will be working on and we'll be working on until the vote. Great. Uh, also, what are the plans to address the Brooklyn Borough President's concerns regarding this project, uh, and will there uh, be space set aside for local organizations and uh, community? So there's a couple of things. You know, we completely agree that the reasons, the, the goals for this project and the goals for are to be, to bring jobs to the area and to create opportunities for um, local entrepreneurs. Um, the ground floor was actually redesigned um, from sort of the original um, concepts to make sure that the spaces at the ground floor were um, smaller spaces, spaces that could attract um, uses that are locally based and could be culturally based. Um, in terms of saying, will it be this particular cultural user? Um, we don't, we can't make that commitment at this point. What we've done is created a floor plan that we believe, you know, lends itself to the local businesses. Great. And uh, last question. If uh, granted this rezoning, uh, will you only be building a commercial office and retail space uh, with no residential units? The building that has been approved by Landmarks and the building that Jonathan showed is a commercial building and it can only be a commercial building. It um, has too deep of floor plates for a commercial building from a zoning standpoint. It wouldn't, doesn't have the courtyards that are 
you, you would be required for a residential building. So um, the plan has been from day one to have a commercial building. We wouldn't have gone through a zoning action if they wanted to do a residential building because you can do that today. Um, so we are quite convinced this is going to be a commercial building. Great, thank you. Uh, before I turn it over to Council Member uh, Levin, I just want to recognize that we have been joined by Council Member Reynoso and uh, we're just gonna take his vote. Vote to approve land use items 267 and 268, Reynoso. I vote aye on all. The land use items are approved by a vote of six in the affirmative and no negative and no abstention. Thank you. Now I turn it over to Council Member Levin. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, thank you for the presentation. Nice to see you both. Um, first question, can you, um, why was it necessary to pursue a rezoning when um, the as of right could have allowed for uh, commercial development? Um, the as of right really could not. The current zoning allows for two FAR of commercial use. And so, but it allows for 7.2 FAR of residential. And so again, what we were trying to do with the rezoning was to allow for a true commercial building from gr ground floor to the top to be able to be built. So there, there was necessarily a, re you know, a rezoning was required. Um, and why is it necessary to do, um, to do the current design with no setbacks as opposed to the setback, you know, the 145 foot building with uh, 15 foot setbacks? Um, I, I, can, right. I can talk about it sort of from a zoning standpoint, and Jonathan can certainly chime in. Um, the, current, the current zoning, again, does have a 145-foot height. It has a street wall height of 105 feet. Mm -hmm. um, you would end up doing dormers. You, would do, you, could do, you could actually have a street wall in portions of the building that could get up to 145, but it would have kind of the... Um, Sorry. It would have the a form that doesn't really lend itself in um, our view to the form of building that you see in Dumbo in large part, which are these loft buildings. And if I can add to that, and, and, I, and, I, and, and the, the, the commissioners at Landmarks Preservation Commission, I think would agree with this, is that the, the setbacks were, which were part of a, a language of zoning Lar largely favoring a residential neighborhoods, favoring set that kind of light and air conditions, don't really apply to the Dumbo district, which is really a, 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 a community in, of, of, st of very sheer street wall volumes that, that really go from the ground straight up to 12, uh, 13, 14 stories. And, and so we're really part of that, that, that warehouse commercial context of buildings. Uh, respecting the street wall, uh, respecting the, the the narrow streets of Dumbo. These are these are not wide streets that you see in in some of the more modern parts of the city. This is a historic district with narrow streets, and these buildings were all built within a 20-year period, largely to support the kind of heavy uh, commercial waterfront warehousing. And and so we really wanted to play into that context and that language of the of holding the street wall. Of, of building a concrete uh, facade, albeit it's a steel frame contemporary structure, uh, but we're doing everything possible to create a contextual building, and, and the street wall is, is such an architectural distinct language to Dumbo, to have a setback on a building of this size and volume would feel like an anomaly. Mm -hmm. Even though there are commercial buildings that have setbacks elsewhere in the city. It, not in this district. Not in this district. Not in this district. Right. Um, but, but, I mean, in terms of the, the way it can be used as a commercial building, a setback doesn't nece necessarily mean that. Um, I mean, I understand f kind of from an architectural perspective, but, um, and, and understand the argument with the context of the neighborhood. But from a use perspective, I mean, I look across the street to our office building at, at 250 Broadway, which is, you know, multiple setbacks, and that's obviously you know, well utilized as a oh, and building. I like that building, and it, and that obeys the laws of symmetry, uh, and and there and and again there are light and air uh, rules for that 
particular building. Mm -hmm. And, and in, our, in our situation, I, it, this is not a large building, it's not a tall building. Um, it, 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 it happens to, to, to conform to, the, to an irregular footprint that we've kind of extruded straight up. And, and that goes for not only the facades on Plymouth and Jay, but also on the, on the, on the rear yards. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're really kind of playing into that, uh, the, that, I guess it's a narrow definition, but when in, the, in the context of Dumbo, and, and we were asked by Landmark specifically to not create a building that you would, might see in Midtown, to make a building specific to the Dumbo district, and, 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 and we, we worked very hard to do that. Um, any change in designs, uh, you made reference to this with Chair Moya's question, that any change in design or change in proposed use or change in proposed use would necessitate a change in design would, um, would require a, a reapproval of appropriateness from LPC? It would. We'd have to go back to, L to landmarks. We'd have to go through the entire process, including going back through the community board and receiving a recommendation. And LPC was adamant that this design, that they wouldn't, that, that they wouldn't necessarily approve a, another design um, that, that wasn't a fully commercial use. Is that right? Or did they, did they opine on the use the, of the Landmarks building? Landmarks does not opine on the use. They opine on the design and the appropriateness and the contextual nature of the building, but from a physical standpoint, not from a use standpoint. Um, I can tell you that their support of this project there was, um, was the, you know, they ended up, it was a sort of, it was a unanimous approval and it was a highly supportive approval. So if there was a, in my view, if there was a substantial change in the project, which would have to happen mm -hmm. for residential, they're gonna remember a project that they thought was really a contributing building and it, it, it could raise challenges. But there's nothing, there's nothing in this zoning that locks you into the full commercial FAR. In other words, there's, you still could, uh, um, or your client could go back to LP, could change the design, change the use to a five residential, five commercial, or ten hotel, and, and, uh, and go back to LPC for that approval, and never and while going through the community board, never have to go back through a, a ULERP to, in order to do that. Again, the zoning that exists today allows for 7.2 FAR of residential, and we're not seeking to change that. So mm -hmm. the, the answer to your question is that if there was a plan or an idea to try to change the project, mm -hmm. it would have to change significantly to be a, especially be a mixed use project, because yeah. you have to deal with cores and things that, you know, it's, it's not a big footprint. It would be very challenging to do. Um, but at a theoretical level, it's possible. Um, again, not to put any more residential that then exists today or is allowed today, but theoretically it would be possible. Right, right. Um, and today you can do 7.2 of residential and two 7.2 of uh, 7.2 is the the size of the project. That size of the project, with yeah. two of that being commercial, yeah. and 5.2 residential. Correct. But you, but then, I mean, just theoretically here, you could do five residential, five commercial, and go from a 7.2 to a 10. I mean, yes. I mean, I realize that it's there's a lot of restraints on that. But there's a lot of restraints, including what's required for a courtyard and what you'd try to do with that space, that floor area that you'd have to take away there. And mm -hmm. it just, it, it seemed, it's, it's, it'd be very, 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 very challenging. Okay. Um, right. I mean, if I could just add to the, to that, the, the way the, there would be a fundamentally different building if you wanted to incorporate residential into mm -hmm. this with the, the cores is, is moved over to the side, which supports a, a, a one or two tenants per floor that, that wouldn't fit a residential layout at all. Mm -hmm. The lot line windows, which are non-operable and, and fire resistant, uh, wouldn't fit a residential light and air uh, condition. Mm -hmm. So it, it would be, a, the, the, the egress would be slightly different. It would be an entirely different building. We probably wouldn't make it out of steel. It would be more of concrete because steel is more amenable to a commercial 
open space layout. If mm -hmm. this were residential, you'd probably build it out of concrete, save a little money, and, and, and have thicker floor plates for acoustical separation, stuff like that. Where, so I, I, I mean, I'm thinking of another type of mixed-use building, a commercial residential building. They tend not to be the larger floor plates. They're more of a vertical. They're stacked on top of each other. The residential and, and commercial are, are stacked on top of each other more instead of, um, you know, instead of such a, a wide footprint. Is that what you're saying? Or a yeah, large floor plate? Yeah, yeah. I think the, the you'd, you'd, you'd probably go with a setback building if it were residential mm -hmm. and because of the the smaller footprint is, is a more suitable to that mm -hmm. Or you'd push it from the back and take advantage of the dormant rules to get a street wall, which is just as high, which okay. probably would work better from a landmark standpoint. But you'd have to deal with two separate lobbies, again, yep. in a very small floor plate, yes. um, two separate elevator banks. That um, would be a challenge. Okay. Um, Have you looked at what the impact um, on the neighboring uh, 25J property that is included in the rezoning, what the impact would be on that, on that property? Uh, you know, it, it, it is included in the, the rezoning. Um, it is a building which has been identified um, as a contributing building in the historic district, um, it, which means that unlike the building that had been on the site, which was not a contributing building, right. that it would need to remain on that site. Um, from a sort of practical perspective, um, if you are asking about is it possible to enlarge that building, mm -hmm. from a landmark standpoint, possibly one or two stories, which is what would be the case under the zoning today. Today okay. But anything would need LPC approval because it's a contributing building. Anything would need LPC approval and the building itself cannot be eliminated and at most it would be adding a, st a story or two and from a zoning standpoint that's something they could pursue today if it needs some. Um, can you speak a little bit about the loading docks and the location of the loading docks and what kind of impact that might have and whether there are alternatives Going for the location? Way, I think. Yes. So the loading dock is the, on the easternmost side on Plymouth Street. Um, from a kind of use standpoint, we expect that there would be, on average, about one truck arriving on the site per hour. Um, wow. And so the loading berth would have that sort of activity. It would not be particularly active. Um, it was located where it was for, um, on, on the Plymouth Street side for a couple of reasons, and it's not the only loading dock on that street. I think there's just like six entrances, uh, loading berths on that block. Mm -hmm. um, it is certainly a quieter, quieter street from a pedestrian <coughs> standpoint. We wanted to, uh, you know, there is a fair amount of pedestrian traffic on J Street, and, uh, and so we wanted to not create a situation where the, tr the few trucks that were coming in were going to be competing with pedestrians that were using the main streets. Mm -hmm. um, and we thought that it created a, it, it, it addressed some challenges that exist today that because the building is partly within the flood zone. Um, and uh, you can kind of see from this picture, it's not that easy, is that the first floor, um, first floor is actually elevated from the J Street side. And oh. so by keeping it on the, on the Plymouth Street side, we were sort of able to create a quick in and a quick out that sort of worked with the floor plates of the building. So we think it's in the right place, um, and we do uh -huh. not think it will have a, add significant traffic uh, to, uh, to Plymouth Street. We really think it's going to be limited in, in its use. Um, I mean, Plymouth Street is a, is a Belgian block street. Does that present any challenges because of the... Well, both streets are, um, mm -hmm. and the J Street has um, a plan for you know significant. I think we have some pictures of what they're proposing. Is mm -hmm. that the best? Yeah, that might be the best. And so um, it's the nature of the streets. I think what it might do is encourage smaller trucks to be used for the building, um, but we don't we don't foresee the Belgian blocks being a limitation on the ability for trucks to be able to use the loading dock or to access it easily. 
And the fact that it's such a narrow street that wouldn't present a challenge for trucks backing in and out? Yeah, we don't I think so. I think it, it works from a, from a ma maneuvering standpoint. Okay. Yeah, I think it's more of, of a drop-off type of loading and unloading. Uh, the, being an office uh, space, I, I, this is not a, a large, large objects. It's is more paper mm -hmm. and it is not a manufacturing district and I think mm -hmm. this is the, the loading and unloading is more the UPS and FedEx drop off and they're they're pretty fast. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Is this part of the, the Dumbo Street reconstruction project? Do you know? It is. On um, Plymouth Street? Yeah, so what you're seeing I, I, I might be answering the wrong question. So um, there's a proposed DOT long-term street and, reconstruction. And I, I that's think that's that's really restricted to the J Street, um, you, new new utilities being put into J Street mm -hmm. uh, when and DOT is is meant to be uh, using ADA uh, granite pavers for for the crosswalks and mm. uh, incor reincorporating the Belgian blocks. We, we have a, a design for our sidewalk that, that which we can control that, that will incorporate both Belgian blocks and, and granite pavers as well as new concrete on the, on the uh, Plymouth Street sidewalk. Right, yeah. and the image that's up right now reflects our understanding of what our DOT is addressing the Belgian block in J Street. Uh, okay, but not on Plymouth is not part of the. Plymouth is not part. The of reason the I ask is that if they're digging at Plymouth for a couple of years, that might present challenges as well for a loading dock there if it's not accessible. Um, and then, do, would you ensure that because this there's been a, an ongoing challenge with um, utilities digging up Belgian block streets on uh, in Dumbo and and not replacing it in kind and cutting through. Belgian block, and um, would you be able to ensure that you're keeping, you know, uh, you know, eye out for the streets adjacent to the property to make sure that that's not happening, or that certainly in terms of the work that we would do if it needed to disturb the Belgian block, then that's absolutely something that we can do. Mm -hmm. In terms of DOT doing its work, that might be a bit more of a challenge, but we could certainly talk about whether there are things that we can do as a as a, as a neighbor or a resource in terms of making sure that DOT is doing what it is supposed to be doing with okay. the block. Because often it's it's not, I mean, we get weekly complaints, if not more often, about um, you know the gradual uh, dis kind of disintegration of that historic context yeah. um, on, on the street level. Yeah, it's, you know, the, the preservation is certainly something that the project, the developer and the owner supports. Okay. Um, a couple more questions, Mr. Chair. Um, what type of uh, you might have, the chair might have asked this? What type of tenants do you envision um, you know, on the on the ground floor? On the ground floor, um, we expect and the size of the retail locations, or yeah, we have three different le retail um, areas on the ground floor. We size them small, mm -hmm. um, with the goal of uh, making them attractive and the right size for smaller businesses, neighborhood businesses. Um, and so one is about a little over 4,000 square feet, um, and then the other two are just under and just over 2,000. So we think those are good sizes for um, having um, neighborhood-oriented types of retail. Um, the current building on the site has uh, been home to arts organizations for the last six, seven, or eight years, maybe. Um, do you, is there any role for uh, arts organizations, either neighborhood based or, uh, you know, around the borough, uh, to be able to participate in any of those office spaces? Yeah, there have been two different art or organizations, um, you know, the, to, the, supposed to be an interim home for both of them. The first mm -hmm. one was a success and was able to move on. Mm -hmm. um, the current um, operator is a, a is, is aware of this project, um, mm. has been subsidized for the last couple of years by the owners, so it kind of been allowed to, to stay, you know, at a, at a different, at a, at a different rate. Um, that, again, when they thought about the size of the projects um, and the, the size of these areas, um, you know, of the 
what, what we have identified as retail space, we again think that that could be a size and a scale that could support a cultural organization. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a small startup grassroots type one. And mm -hmm. so that is a possibility, mm -hmm. but in terms of committing to it being used for those uses, that's something where we think the, the, the market should need, needs to see if that is a viable thing. So we've created the spaces that could um, attract that kind of use and be available right. for that kind of use, but we don't have a commitment to them being that use. Okay. And I think Melanie's referring to the to the L-shaped 4,000 square foot over 4,600 4, square feet, and the, it's a with a tall ceiling. Uh, it, it could be adapted to a, a, a dance space a, mm. with a venue with it that needs that 16 foot high ceiling, um, or or a gallery or something. If if that were to be the case, somebody was interested. It's definitely designed to support a a a, a larger space. Um, uh, do you have plans to ensure MWBE, I think Chairman Vest, uh, MWBE, your local base contracting, um, subcontractors, and a plan for local hiring? I think we're certainly open and willing to, to work on all of that. You know, we're at the stage of having a project and a design. Mm -hmm. um, we've, um, the expectation as we move forward that we'll be hiring a contractor that works and um, and uh, that that includes those programs, and it's something that I think the ownership and the developer is committing to see happen. We've also talked about um, the need for good information within the neighborhood to make sure that the community is aware of when construction activities will occur and what opportunities there are, and that's something that the developer and the owner has committed to do as well. Um, wanted to ask about building service worker um, prevailing wages, is that something that you're able to commit to? We are in the, uh, we're having active and we, and not from the perspective of the ownership are very productive conversations about that. And that is something that we will hope that we will be continuing, we'll have, be having continuing discussions um, for the next week or so on that. Okay, does your, um, does your client have like a, a responsible contractor policy with building service workers that they've I, mean, I know this is their first commercial building, yeah. but is that something that they've looked into? I think that's something that they policy? understand, and that they that would need, they need to be thinking about this. Um, and then we, we've heard some uh, uh, concerns from uh, residents on Water Street, uh, which you know nearby uh, or next door, um, uh, and there are just concerns about uh, the scale. Um, uh, light and air issues. Have you uh, communicated with with those neighbors and seen if there's ways that uh, their concerns can be addressed? Well, I think there's a couple of things. We have certainly had communications with uh, various groups within the within the neighborhood. We've talked mm -hmm. to some individual um, residents. The building that we could build again as of as of right and what we're proposing now are about the same height. I think we're three feet taller than what zoning allows today. Um, we could have dorm, do, dormers that go up to a height of 145 feet today with setbacks in other locations. We think it's the right building. Um, we think that it's the right building from an architectural standpoint and from a scale standpoint. Um, and again, we were, we were pleased to get the community board support for that and we were pleased to get the um, Landmarks Commission's um, strong support for that as well. So we, we, we think it's the right building. Okay, I encourage you to, you know, continue sp speaking with neighbors and, and I think that some of them are here to testify today. So yeah. if you could stay to hear their concerns and then, um, you know, in the, in the coming days, let's, let's sit down and see if we can address okay. them. We, yes, and I would say that, we, as, and I think you'll hear testimony on this, that we also do have support from some of the local um, neighborhood organizations that do think that this is the right project in the right place. Okay, Thank great. You. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Council Member. Uh, I want to uh, acknowledge that we've been joined by Council Members Constantinides and Torres, and um, we are now going to open up the vote. This is the continued vote to approve land use items 267 and 268. 
Constantinides? I vote aye. Torres? I vote aye. The land use items are approved by a vote of eight in the affirmative, zero negative, and no abstentions. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Torres. Uh, I will now be calling up the next panel, uh, Zamir Khan, Alex Alexandra Sika, and Doreen uh, Gallo. Go first, though. Uh, okay. okay. All right. Uh, is this on? Yeah. Hi. Just if you see the red button, it's on, and just state your yeah, name. Yeah, it's on. Hi, uh, Doreen Gallo, and I'm representing the Dumbo Neighborhood Alliance. Uh, good morning, Chair Moya and Council Members. Thank you for your continued dedication and for providing the opportunity to testify in support of the 29 J Street proposal on behalf of the Dumbo Neighborhood Alliance, we'll refer to as DNA. DNA has remained in contact with the Foremans and their team for well over a year. We appreciate their engagement in 29 J Street as well as their decades of ongoing commitment to Dumbo. After the Dumbo Neighborhood Alliance Preservation Committee extensively reviewed this proposal, we were unanimously on board and excited to move forward with the proposed Marvel Architecture Building at this non-contributing site in our Dumbo Historic District. We look forward to this project's approval and look forward to this building being realized. It's a very time, exciting time for Dumbo with recent uniquely new buildings as this proposal, one John Street in Brooklyn Bridge Park and the recent adaptive reuse projects at 10 J Street and 4250 J Street residential proposal, formerly the Phoenix House facility and residence. There is an architectural synergy of materials and references in all of these sites and we believe that the 29 J Street uh, project will be very a very special addition. DNA has testified through the Euler proceedings and through, before the Landmark Preservation Commission and support the changes made through that process. Um, I just want to read a little introduction about the zoning. Um, uh, DNA is generally against spot zoning and takes exception for this case because of what is permitted as of right from the Ch Dumbo 2009 rezoning. So I've given um, everyone a copy of our testimony today, and I'm just going to read the introduction of our zoning and our position in 2009. The Dumbo Neighborhood Alliance is strongly opposed to the Department of City Planning sponsored proposed 12 block rezoning east of the Manhattan Bridge as it flies in the face of both the community Board two initiated and community supported old Brooklyn District 197A plan designed a decade as well as ago, as well as our own proposal for a comprehensive rezoning plan for all of Dumbo, Fulton Ferry, Vinegar Hill. Our plan designed by urban planner Paul Graziano was initiated in response to the piecemeal efforts over the past decade by the Department of City Planning who has ignored the old Brooklyn District plan in its entirety with the exception of the rezoning in a small portion of Vinegar Hill, DCP has supported high density growth driven by developers in the Dumbo area. The current DCP proposal is no exception. Going back to our testimony today. So we took a strong stand against the upzoning at the time, um, but we, uh, we feel we supported this proposal because of the as of right uh, rezoning. And while DNA remains in favor of the zoning changes and text amendments to dedicate this land for commercial use, there already exists a strong influx of commercial space in our historic district. And we believe this current proposal would be an exceptional addition and will further enhance our neighborhood and quality of life. Um, at the community board level, a big uh, reason that the community board supported the rezoning was about bringing jobs to the neighborhood. That was their key um, reason for the support of that. And um, the Dumbo Neighborhood Alliance mostly supported it for that reason as well as this particular building. Uh, 
Uh, good morning. My name is Zamir Khan. Uh, good morning, Chair Moya, Council Member Levine, and members of the subcommittee. Uh, I'm here. I've been a member of the local 32BJ for the past nine years. Uh, I'm here today on behalf of the 80,000 members of 32BJ who clean and maintain buildings throughout our city. New York City's economy is hard on working families. For this reason, we believe that developers should commit to providing good building service jobs. These are jobs that pay family sustaining workers and give workers like myself, my coworkers, dignity in the city. Uh, we're here to inform you that we are in ongoing conversations with Foreman Ferry LLC, the developer at 29J, uh, and we are hopeful that the discussions will lead to a comprehensive and enduring guarantee that building service workers at the site will have good jobs that pay the prevailing wage. Uh, as you know, building service jobs are typically filled by local community members uh, and can provide working people with important opportunities for economic security and mobility when they come with strong standards. Uh, we believe that adequate assurances need to be in place that the building service jobs at the site will provide workers with industry standard wages to create more inclusive economy in what has become a very expensive Brooklyn. Uh, I went to high school and college, Brooklyn Tech, uh, LIU Brooklyn. I understand how much it's changed since 2001 when I started there to now. Uh, and we'll keep uh, the council informed about our progress with Foreman Ferry LLC. And we urge you to ensure that the proposed rezoning will, develop, will deliver meaningful economic opportunities to workers and the community before allowing it to move forward. Uh, thank you for your time and thank you for allowing us here today. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, my name is Ashley Thompson. I'll be reading a statement on behalf of Alexandria Sika and the Dumbo Improvement District. The Dumbo Improvement District is pleased to support the zoning application for a new commercial building at 29 J Street. J Street has transformed into one of Dumbo's main thoroughfares and the proposed building, which will include ground floor retail, will add to the vibrancy of the streetscape and create much needed space for creative companies. Dumbo is leading the way for Brooklyn's resurgence as a commercial district of choice. Unfortunately, our zoning currently only allows for additional FAR for residential construction. This ULERP acknowledges that we should be able to support commercial development as well. Moreover, the design is beautiful and will blend, and will blend uh, to the historic characteristics of the neighborhood with modern architecture. Um, Dumbo has flourished thanks in part to the diverse mix of companies that put down roots in the neighborhood. The proximity to Manhattan and downtown Brooklyn, the adjacent Brooklyn Bridge Park, and amenities such as a growing restaurant scene have all contributed to the exciting atmosphere for companies large and small. As a growing number of companies look to Dumbo, it is essential that the neighborhood has commercial office space options that fit their needs. Once complete, 29J Street will provide new Class A office space with the types of amenities that businesses are seeking. This rezoning proposal will allow a commercial building of the same height with a street wall height that is consistent with other Dumbo, Dumbo buildings. In addition to providing additional opportunities for residents to live and work in Dumbo, the proposed rezoning will minimize the building's impact on neighborhood infrastructure and be representative of Dumbo's architectural character. We are very excited about this transformative project and respectfully ask that you support 29J Street's application. Thank you for your time. Thank you. I just want to thank this panel very much for your attention. Thank you. And I call up the uh, next panel. We have uh, Deborah Schaefer, uh, Julia Ryan, and Kathleen Cat. And we'll start with you, Kathleen. Good morning. Yep. Right. Um, good morning. I'm here today to urge you to reject the zoning change at 29J Street. During my time as a Dumbo resident over the last six years, the amount of change in our neighborhood has been truly shocking. 
Currently, there are several massive projects underway that will fundamentally change the composition of the neighborhood. 85J alone will increase the population by 25%. I know that most of this is due to the rezoning that occurred in 2009, but the neighborhood was a completely different place than it is now. It was struggling for tenants of all kinds, so zoning changes were helpful. At this point, though, the neighborhood feels like it has absorbed as much density as it can withstand. If you consider these large construction projects with the influx of tourists, the lack of infrastructure improvements, and the impending street reconstruction project, and this neighborhood simply may implode. It is time for the council and the city to begin listening to and heeding residents' concerns as we are the ones who witness and are subject to these issues daily. The area east of J Street and north of Front Street, where 29 J Street resides, is truly one of the most charming, historic, and unique areas of Brooklyn. It is filled with beautiful and quirky low-slung buildings that are mainly used as offices and residences. It is quiet, which is saying something for Dumbo. But it is a welcome refuge from the circus that is now Washington Street. This, propo this proposed office building is completely out of touch, out of character, out of scale, and out of context in this part of the neighborhood. Plymouth Street itself is both narrow and dilapidated, and it is simply incomprehensible that it was chosen as the location for 29J's loading dock. I could speak about that alone for three minutes. The neighborhood already has plenty of office space and retail space that is going unused. 10J is having great difficulty signing on tenants, and large parts of Dumbo Heights, both commercial and retail, are still vacant. It is confusing to me why more retail and commercial space is necessary. If you allow the rezoning of 29J Street, it can and likely will be used as evidence for the rezoning of the rest of the neighborhood. And before we all know it, one of the most charming areas in all of New York will lose all of its charm. Filled with cookie cutter glass buildings where century old picturesque warehouses and factories once stood. I urge you to either reject the rezoning request or at minimum postpone the hearing so that the developer of 29J can have the ample time to study the impact the commercial zoning would bring to the neighborhood. It is completely irresponsible to continue to blindly green light any and all development without, without proper consideration of the effects it will have, especially on our streets, subway infrastructure, and our daily lives. Thank you. Thank you. You may proceed. Yep. Yeah, hello, and hello, and thank you for um, allowing us to testify. My name is Deborah Schaefer. I am a uh, documentary film producer and director, and um, I did not yet live in Dumbo when the rezoning plan was approved along J Street, uh, extending from Plymouth to John and 150 feet to the east. In 2009, the area was designated R14 mixed-use commercial residential zoning. Plymouth Street then had an entirely different character. The adjoining building at 185 was an old factory building. 205 Water across Plymouth was an empty lot, and 51J also across Plymouth was an abandoned and derelict factory building. Those buildings are now fully occupied, attractive residential buildings and are between four and seven stories tall with penthouses above. These low buildings would be dwarfed by the proposed 11-story building, which is completely out of scale and out of character with the neighborhood and is inappropriately large for the corner of Jay and Plymouth. Uh, you notice in all the photographs we've been shown, we never see the top of the building that's being proposed at 29J in relation to its neighbors across and next to it on Plymouth Street, which are much, much lower. Um, the building that uh, Foreman Ferry seeks to demolish and replace with a commercial building is two stories, originally a furniture warehouse that was home to St. Anne's Warehouse and now the current tenant, the Gelsey Kirkland School of Ballet. I have been present at multiple presentations by the developer, including CB2, the Brooklyn Borough President's Office, Landmarks, the City Planning Commission, and here today. They consistently only describe the building in relation to 20J, which is across J Street to the west. They have ignored the potential impact of the, of the building on the neighbors east and south on Plymouth Street, which is an extremely narrow street, as has been pointed out. Their massive building would block light and air, their loading docks and parking garage would create traffic congestion and hazards, and their large glass windows would glare into the neighboring homes while allowing the residents on Plymouth a too intimate view of what is going on inside the building. And I know this from experience because this is a glass penthouse was plopped on top of 185 Plymouth since I moved in. Um, 
At the very least, setbacks are needed, as specified by the existing zoning for a residential building, also a lower FAR, as specified by the existing zoning. Um, I do not believe that more office space is currently needed in Dumbo, nor 800 to 1,000 transient workers who will further stress the badly overcrowded and potentially dangerous subway station at York Street. In addition to requesting that the zoning change not be approved, I would request that the developers be required to move the loading docks and parking garage to J Street, which is a much wider and more commercial street. Uh, you have a letter from my neighbor in the penthouse at 205 Water Street, uh, at 205 Water Street, renowned architect Bjarke Ingalls, who employs 220 people at his Dumbo office and whose architectural projects are making significant contributions all over New York City including in Hudson Yards and the Old Lord and Taylor Building on Fifth Avenue. I hope you will read his letter carefully also and consider his plea for balance in development of, of our beloved neighborhood and community. Thank you. Thanks. I concur with everything oh, these sorry. two ladies said. You provided that, that letter? Yeah. The Bjarke Engels letter was, was sent. His, his, um, he, his partner just there in, there overseas, they've just had a child. They've just had a baby in Spain. So okay. um, his letter was sent. Uh, yeah, was okay. It? Okay. Great. Hi, council members. My name is Julia Ryan. I'm writing to implore that you deny the requested zoning change from mixed use commercial residential to commercial use for 29J and by extension to adjacent 25J Street in the Dumbo Historic District. I have been a resident in this neighborhood for 14 years and a former member of the DNA Steering Committee. I chose to invest in this neighborhood because of its stirring historic buildings and industrial features, which I feel must be preserved for future generations of New Yorkers, whom can link their immigrant heritage to this once bustling, significant waterfront. I do understand when change is necessary and positive. However, I have seen an abundance of unwarranted change in the name of progress and modernization, which are neither needed nor wanted. Developers have been allowed to make bogus arguments about helping in the development of Dumbo east of the Manhattan Bridge anchorage. This is what led to the totally unnecessary rezoning in 2009, which the DNA and the Historic District Council opposed. Just to remind you, here is what the now approved rezoning proposal put forth at that time. Quote, rezoning proposal for the, se for the section of Dumbo east of the Manhattan Bridge that would allow residential conversion of existing loft buildings and foster new mixed-use construction while providing predictability and height limits that reflect the area's historic character. It would also, for the first time in Dumbo, provide zoning incentives for the creation of affordable housing in new construction. What has evolved instead is a travesty and developer overreach. There has been little, if any, affordable housing created, but rather obscenely overpriced commercial space and luxury lofts. The historic character of J Street, which has much lower buildings on its east side, where this rezoned tower will rise, has at present no buildings over six or seven stories tall. Yet this tower will rise to over 12 stories, with bulkheads and mechanicals soaring even higher, making it a monolith of incongruity. The argument that it will mirror the elegant concrete gear building which sits on the west side of, at J, at 20J, is a joke. The hideous design proposed by this modern tower is bulky, dense, and way too tall. It is not at all in the spirit of the 2009 rezoning. Alas, since the parcel has been approved by a commercial residential tower to be built, already out of scale but within the 2009 guidelines, then we can at least keep this unwanted construction to the least dense and least tall option available. Do not approve a commercial building which will be bigger and which will inappropriately stress the quiet and narrow Plymouth Street with commercial trash collection, loading docks, and a garage entrance. Are you even aware that some of the most beautiful and last remaining original blue, stock, blue stone sidewalks and the most intact section of the embedded J Street light railway tracks exist on this corner. The proposed construction seems to be completely disregarding this priceless treasure. A residential building would be required to have setbacks above the sixth floor, making the silhouette far more appropriate to match the buildings which will flank it on the east side of Plymouth Street and J Street as well as the lower buildings which will be next to it on Plymouth and Water. Also the residential work would be less densely, sorry, also the residential building 
would be less densely populated, causing less rush hour congestion at the already overstressed and sometimes dangerous York Street subway station with its single entrance. It is frequently perilously overcrowded when Dumbo is the site for large citywide events. We are dealing with a plethora of tourists, an onslaught of never-ending construction, and daily, this is not an exaggeration, daily film shoots which disrupt our lives. Our reward for buying homes and raising our children here, the diminishment of our quality of life with outrageous developer greed. Please, ensure that this building simply comply with the current zoning laws that exist and do not allow a denser, bulkier, inappropriate structure to be built. Thank you. Thank you very much for your testimony. Thank you. Uh, just, sorry, one quick point. So, um, just to, on the issue, and I appreciate all, all the testimony. I look forward to talking with you all uh, in the coming days. Um, uh, in regard to the sidewalk on the corner, so yes. we've been focused on this for a while. This is part of the DOT street reconstruction yeah. plan, that, um, and this is one location that they've identified as the, the ADA accessibility issues with the railroad ties. And so there, this is sure. more than the developer driving that sidewalk uh, configuration. I am curious, uh, though. There's been another spot on Plymouth where Josh Gutman was allowed to fill in his sidewalk right over some existing railroad that went into a foundry building. What is going on with that? I, I, I know that's another issue. It's sorry. another issue. I'm just uh, just with with regard to this corner. Um, huh? This has been something that's been an ongoing conversation. Sure, with but it DOT. is a treasure that needs to be preserved. I know there might be ADA issues, but we need to, we can't just cover it over with concrete. No, I understand. I'm, I'm, what I'm saying is that the, the the sidewalk question is primarily a DOT driven conversation rather right. than a de this development. I understand. Sure, I understand. I'm just putting it in here so y'all can hear it. Yep, absolutely. Right. of the public uh, who wish to testify. Uh, seeing none, I now close the public hearing on this application and it will be laid over. Um, and the land use items that we voted on today will be referred to the full land use committee. Uh, this concludes today's uh, meeting. Uh, I would like to uh, thank the members of the public, my colleagues, the council and land use staff uh, for attending. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, this meeting is hereby adjourned. <laughs>